Okay, so now we're going to take a closer look at editing architectural interiors and the ways that you can use bracketing and exposure stacks in order to expose for both your windows, uh, to expose for both your windows as well as your interior. Now, you'll notice um, on this set of photos, which were taken at the theater school at DePaul, um, I set up a tripod and took a series of photos ranging from uh, a like pretty low exposure over here um, where we have you know really great exposure in the windows to an, a very bright exposure where we've really exposed for the interior um, but the windows are blown out. So as I'm setting up to take these pictures I'm actually going to bracket them while on the tripod and um, you'll notice I'm going to bracket them using a change in my shutter speed. So in this one my shutter speed is at 0.5 of a second. I'm really closed down at F10 at ISO 100. And then as I move forward, this one is at 1 fourth of a second. This one is at 1 eighth of a second. And this one is at 1 15th of a second. The other thing to mention is that you can see that there are some people that walk past in the window. And then we have this woman who's walking out of the building. And so that's something else to keep in mind as we go through the exposure stacking process. What I'm going to do is actually use all four of these photos to create an HDR photo merge, which will give me a lot of high dynamic range to work with as I move forward th through the final edit. So I'm going to select all of these images, which I've selected out of my set. I'm going to right click on that image set and go up to photo merge and click on HDR which is going to give me a dialog box and uh, show me a preview of what that HDR will look like once it is done processing. Now, you'll also see that I have this option of dehogs to amount, and that essentially accounts for how much a, the HDR photo needs to correct for anything moving, like people in the frame or moving leaves on a tree. So for this one, since I know that I did have some people moving around outside and I have this woman who's walking across the way, I'm gonna go ahead and set my dehogs to mount to medium. If it's not enough, I can always set it to high, but I think medium is gonna give me a nice natural look, but also save uh, the detail of uh, this person walking here. So I'll hit merge. And you'll notice up here, Lightroom is showing me that it's creating that HDR image. And that's gonna take a minute because it's processing a lot of information here. And that is going to populate shortly next to my series of images. Cool, so here it is. Is that it? Oh, nope. Is this it? Yes, nope, this is the one. So um, you'll notice I know for a fact that this is my HDR photo stack because it has these two pictures right next to each right next to each other, these little black boxes that shows me that this is an HDR photo. So photo number 30 is my HDR stack. This is the one that I'll move forward with for our edit. So I can go into my develop module And within the develop module, I can start to make some adjustments. But you'll notice, because this is an HDR interior photo that I've exported, I already have some modifications that have been made to my basic edits in my basic editing module. So we're gonna come circle back around to that. But the first thing I wanna show you over here, because we have this high contrast area between the outside or the exterior and the interior bars here that are our panel windows, I have chromatic aberration that's popping up with this green fringing and this red fringing over here on the side. So in order to take care of that, the first thing I'm gonna do is come down to my lens corrections and check my remove chromatic aberration box boom, totally disappears, and enable profile corrections, which is something that you'll do with virtually every photo that you take. 
So once I have that set in my lens corrections, I am going to zoom out. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna make my vertical transformations. So let's just hit that vertical button, see how well that, that corrects it. Not bad at all. If I wanna try the guided uh, version, I can do that by pulling down my two lines on either side and that looks even better. So I'm gonna rock and roll with my guided transformation here because that looks great. And then I'm gonna come up and start making my general adjustments. You notice it's already set our white point and our black point, which is great. It's pulled down our highlights. I am going to cool down my temperature because the interior here is super warm from all of those tungsten lights. So I am pulling down that temperature here significantly and we'll make some more detailed corrections in the HSL window. I'm also gonna pull up my exposure because my interior exposure still feels a little bit dark to me. And then I'm gonna add back in some of the contrast to make that photo really punchy. And let's go down to our HSL window, make those detailed adjustments to color. I'm gonna take down oranges, minus 15, and I'm gonna take down yellows, minus 10, and I might continue working with my temperature on the interior here as I go. Something you'll notice working with interior photos is that the indoor light will tend to have more of a yellowish Kelvin value or yellow, uh, warmer quality on the scale and then your exterior light will have a bluer quality on the scale. So many times I will pull out some blues and aquas from these pictures as well because the lighting can start to feel a little bit muddy. It can get a little bit muddy as you um, are working through that edit. Let's pull down a bit more temperature. It is just a very yellow tungsten lit space here. That's starting to look really nice. And then the last thing I want to do is recover even more of our highlights and exposure from the exterior windows here. So I'm going to hit K. I want burn highlights on and I am going to brush in our windows so that they aren't quite as blown out and I'm still getting some detail from the outside there. That looks way better. If I want, I can customize it a bit by pulling down that exposure even a little bit more to pull in even greater detail. I hit K again, and um, that's looking really good. So um, the last things that you might go and take a look at are your clarity settings, your um, tone curve, adding in even a little bit more contrast by pushing up your lights, your darks, pulling back your shadows to kind of compensate for that. And if I hit my before and after, it's a dramatically different image, a really, really nice interior here in the theater school at DePaul. Let's walk through one other example, and I'm gonna pull up some images from a hotel interior here. Um, on the Chicago River Walk. And I, in particular, want to show you a specific area um, that I think is a really good example of this. Here you can see this is my edited version. We have a uh, window with the Chicago architecture that's being exposed and then an interior as well in this space. And here you can see I've exposure stacked, so this is overexposed at 0.8 seconds, F11, this is 0.4 seconds, the window is still blown out, one fifth of a second, one tenth of a second, one twentieth of a second, one fortieth of a second, and um, we're, we're back. So I took this series of exposure stack brackets so that I would be able to end up with a final image that looks 
like this, where we have both the view out the window as well as the interior perfectly well lit. And this is the final um, edit for this particular photo. So if I wanna walk through that process again, I can grab our four um, or six exposure stacks here all the way through. I'm going to hold down my control, go to Photo Merge HDR. Since nothing moved while I was photographing in here, there weren't any birds or people um, or leaves rustling outside, I don't need to worry about the D hogs to mount quite as much as I did inside of the theater building at DePaul. So I will hit none on that. And I should see a preview as um, Lightroom processes this. Perfect. That looks like a good starting point. I will hit merge. And then I'm going to look for that photo merge to populate so that I can edit it with all of our high dynamic range detail. Cool. And again, I'll be able to find that because it has the, um, the little black squares here at the bottom that show me that that is my photo merge. And then I'll be able to see all of the adjustments that Lightroom has made on that interior uh, within my basic editing range. So first thing I'm gonna do is just pull up that exposure. I'm gonna add my lens corrections. And then I'm going to pull out some of the yellow from that interior. I'll do some more specific edits on that here in a second. I'm gonna add some punchy contrast and some clarity. Again, you don't wanna go overboard with this. You don't want it to call attention to itself. Um, I'm gonna pull out some of those oranges and yellows and I'm also gonna eliminate some of my blue spill that's happening from the window onto the chair here to kind of balance that out. And you can see the difference. Again, it's pretty subtle, but that HSL tab is super, super helpful. Let's use our transform tool to make sure that this room has perfect verticals. I might crop a little bit so that that smoke detector isn't in frame. And then um, I'll add a bit more contrast working within my tone curve window. And then I'm gonna burn in some of the highlights from the window here to the outside world. And to do that, I will hit K, go to burn highlights, and use that brush to totally burn in the information here. And I can get pretty detailed with this if I want, but I think this is giving me the effect that I'm looking for. And that helps a lot, especially if you have something like a couch here and you don't want that to come off as being uh, backlit. So then I can hit K. If I want, I can hit M and um, increase a little bit of the exposure here on our ceiling and the floor. Make that a bit brighter, because I'm getting a bit of fall off there. And there you go. I'm gonna hit that backslash button under the delete. And that is our before and after. So that is a simple guide with a couple of examples on how to photograph and edit your interiors. It all starts with exposure bracketing, setting up with the tripod, making sure you have that aperture really nice and closed down, and of course taking full control over the framing of the scene that you're trying to set in that interior image. I hope that's helpful on your projects for moving forward.